being a mother is one of the greatest and hardest jobs in the world. We that's one job we cannot wake up and just quit. We 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 solid. We, we're settled for being side chicks because they could get whatever they want out of a nigga without actually having to be attached to that nigga. Better from them because that's somebody that don't really know you like that. And they see you beautiful and they feel your aurora and you like, wait a minute, that made me feel good inside. Like you really think I'm pretty? Hey guys, it's the beautiful Lex here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, like, comment, subscribe. If you've been here, welcome back and let's just get right into the video. We are going to be doing another girl talk and in this girl talk we are going to be talking about self-love motherhood and being a side chick so let's just get right into the video a lot of people don't really people speak on it but they don't really know how it feels until they become a mother let me just get right into it i see day in and day out a lot of women without kids speak on women who have kids and something they always say is oh I've raised my nieces and nephews. I've raised my little cousins, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that just makes me think, or it gives off, I have experience with raising other people kids and not my own. Because it's different when you're raising other people kids or helping out with someone else's kids versus doing it for your own. Like you really start to see things differently when it's you doing it for your kids. Because before I became a mother, I used to always think, damn, it can't be that hard. Damn, it can't be this difficult. When I finally did become a mother, it was totally different. I never, never, never used to understand why mom used to always be, you know, frustrated or agitated when I was a kid growing up until I stepped into motherhood and I stepped into adulthood and realized, damn, it is hard out here, especially when you're doing it all alone. You get frustrated all the time. As a mama, you obligated to be there for your kids, whether you sick, whether you happy, whether you sad, whether you up, whether you down. And these men, they don't have that mindset. These men will get up and leave and put themselves first and I give a damn about their kids. But if us as women be like, F our kids too, we gonna get dragged to the pits of hell. Not saying you're just supposed to wake up one day and be like, F these kids. But most men leave their kids and not worry because they know the mother that they have for their kids going to step for them regardless. Which is selfish. It's like, damn, you know I'm going to be here for these kids and you still won't leave? Where's my help? Where's my support? Like, every day it gets harder and harder. We have to do our job as a mother. Then on top of that, we got to pick up y'all select too. Then it be this huge... Huge, crazy-ass uproar when we get fed up and want to put y'all on child support or we just straight out cut y'all out the situation altogether because we don't want to deal with y'all's drama. Y'all don't understand the things mothers, mothers go through. Y'all don't under, understand the things we endure. Like, being a mother is one of the greatest and hardest jobs in the world. We That's one job we cannot wake up and just quit. We, we, we solid. We stand a 10 toes behind our kids regardless of anything. Now don't get me wrong, women who have kids and don't do nothing for their kids, but you have to know their situation because some women get molested, sexually assaulted, and end up getting pregnant and having a product of something that they didn't want to happen or a product of their traumatic experience. I used to be this type of person or the type of girl I used to be like, I ain't gonna never give up my baby. People that give up their baby to, to adoption agencies are stupid, this and the third. One thing I learned growing up is you cannot say what you, basically never say never. Never say never. Me personally, I would never give up my kids because that is a part of me. That is an extension of me. Yet it may have not been planned, but I'm gonna stand beside them. I'm gonna raise my kids and I'm gonna be there for them. Especially because my mama raised me and my siblings on home and she was there for us. She stood 10 toes, never left us. And we used to go through some stuff in our life. When I say we went through some stuff, we went through some stuff. And when our daddies ditched us, she ain't ditched us. So I feel like if my mama ain't ditched me, I ain't gonna ditch my kids. But I totally understand the women that are aware of their situation and environment and tell themselves, I'm not gonna raise my child in this environment because I don't want them to be just like me. I don't want them to be messed up like me. I want them to be better than me. I respect that. So when mothers think like that or some mothers feel like that, they tend to give their children up for adoption or let a family member raise them until they get their self together. 
or until they feel like they can be better. And then there are some women who try to be great single mothers and raise their kids and they just can't handle it and they just can't do it. So they get hooked on drugs, become alcoholics, trying to find different things to, you know, cope with the fact that they by themselves and they gotta raise these kids alone. I just wanna thank God that I was never weak-minded or desperate to escape my reality because I felt like at, at, at some point in time, I couldn't handle it, you know? As a child, I never really used to understand a lot of things. And my mom used to always tell me and my sisters and my brother, you will not understand now. When you get older and become an adult and start going through things, you're going to see and you're going to understand why I did certain things to y'all and why I felt certain ways about things. And I truly, at 27 years old, y'all, I truly get what my mama was saying, bro. I really do get it. And I'm a type of person. I got to go through stuff for me to realize what it is. Instead of taking the easy way out and just listening to my mama, because my mama been through everything we've been through. She already knows. She been around the block a couple of times. So when my mama be telling me stuff, my crazy self be, don't be listening. I be wanting to see stuff for myself. And to be honest, every single thing my mama told me happened to me. Instead of me just avoiding this shit altogether, I put my hand in that fire and I got burned. But I'm glad it happened to me because now I know, damn, I learned my lesson. I ain't gonna do that no more. I'm one of those people, hey, I just gotta go through it to see it. I'm not one of those people you can tell me, hey, don't touch that, you're gonna, it's gonna be bad. Da -da -da -da. I gotta go through it. And I'm trying to break out of that because I just feel like you said yourself so much hassle and difficulty when you just listen, especially to somebody who knows what they're talking about. So like I've said, like I said, motherhood is hard. It's not easy. Whether you're financially stable or not, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, a hard ass job. And I commend all the mothers who stand by their kids 100% and hold these kids down and show up for these kids when we battling our own shit. We show up for our kids when we battling depression, anxiety. We when we be fucking having suicidal thoughts, when we on the verge of fucking being poor and falling back into poverty, we still we still show when we come through for these kids. That's why I commend y'all. I commend myself. I commend my sisters. I commend my mom. I commend my grandma, aunties, all the women who who still showed up and showed up for their kids when they was battling their own personal things. I see y'all. Y'all are great. Y'all are the epitome of amazing mothers. Everybody don't hold this title. Everybody can't hold this title. But for the ones who do hold this, this title, you're doing a great job and keep pushing through. Self-love. I feel like a lot of times, us women or men stop talking to a person that they've been with for a while. They tend to not really think highly of themselves anymore. It can be, you know, your upbringing as a child. People that don't have self-love have been torn down their whole entire life, have been told they ain't nothing, never gonna be nothing, never gonna amount to nothing. So when you're constantly hearing negative things about yourself and that's all you know and that's all you've been around, you start to believe it. You start to believe you will never amount to nothing, you'll never be nothing. That's why a lot of pretty girls or a lot of decent looking men don't really think highly of themselves. They self-esteem, self-confidence, everything just be in the pits of hell. I used to always think, well, damn, you really are an attractive guy or you really are a beautiful woman. Why do you don't think you're worthy of compliments and all this and all that? Whole time, some people don't know what that is. Some people never had that. Some women never had a father to say, daughter, you're beautiful. I will always love you. I will always be there for you. A man will treat you better than I treat you. So as a young woman, when you're growing up and you don't never get those positive things from your daddy in your head, you will believe anything. You become naive. A man tell you you ain't worthy of it, you gonna believe you ain't worthy of it. That's why a lot of women go looking for love in men because they never had it from their dad growing up. Me, I'm a, I'm a prime example. Well, I was a prime example. You don't get that fatherly love, that security, that masculinity from your daddy. You go looking for it in men. And that's when the whole women just accept or take whatever a man do for them. That's why a lot of women are still with men to this day who are cheaters, liars. And just all type of not a really a good man. And women take to accept that as, oh, this normal. This is as good as it gonna get because they ain't never been exposed to nothing great. They've never seen a good man loving on a mama. 
They never, they don't even know what, what, what healthy real love is. So they take the opposite, which isn't healthy real love. They take a man cursing them out, degrading them, calling them out their name, and constantly going through cycles like that and being in a negative environment and never hearing nothing positive, you're going to think that's all you're going to ever be in life is that. And that's not it. Being bullied causes people to not have good self-love about themselves. Damn near have low self-esteem all their life. People that don't, that have a hard time loving themselves, have a hard time accepting or hearing good things about themselves too. I used to be like that. Thank God I'm not like that no more, but I used to be. Like when, when in high school, I really started like paying attention to myself more. My hair, face, like nose ring, lashes, earrings. You know, I just started keeping myself up more. And you know, of course I'm paying attention to myself. We as we, we pay attention to ourselves. I'm being girly or whatever like that. But when a man comes along, a guy you like comes along and compliments you, it just feels 10 times better from them because that's somebody that don't really know you like that. And they see you beautiful and they feel your aurora and you're like, wait a minute, that made me feel good inside. Like you really think I'm pretty? Whole time, you, 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 you telling it to yourself every day Basically, you knowing, oh yeah, I'm her, I'm pretty, I'm beautiful. But it just feels 10 times better when you hear from a stranger or you hear it from somebody that you think highly of. Because you're just like, damn, I know I think highly of myself, but y'all think highly of me too? All right then. So you start to feel like, well, damn, I'm not the only one that noticed I have, you know, a nice amount of self-love. And not only that, people's self-love tends to fade or you know go downhill when they've been through things like when you're trying to get back to yourself after going through some hardship or some traumatic things in life your self-love tends to fade that's why you always hear or you always see women say or do do things that make you happy or do things that make you feel good go get your head done eyebrows waxed lashes done get you some new earrings jewelry Lipstick, get your makeup done, get your feet done. Just have a whole self-care pampering day to make yourself feel whole again and to make yourself feel 100% again because you're just sitting around, sitting in the phone and you already don't really feel that well about yourself. just going to make it worse. That's why it's essential for mothers, women, people, period, to have those days and those times where they just have time for themselves. No kids, no husband, no boyfriend, no work, no job, no nothing. Just totally could disconnect for like 24 to 48 hours that's why when you hear people say oh i had to unplug and it was peaceful and i'm back and i'm better yeah that's what they mean taking that time out for you is essential regardless if you a mother a wife a girlfriend everybody requires that time alone you gotta think you was born in this world alone not speaking to people who had you know who was a twin or was born with a twin but i'm just saying you was born in the world alone you know what i'm saying so have that it's essential to have that me time that's why when you around certain people or certain things for a, a, a long period of time, you get over overstimulated and you get agitated and you get jittery. That's because it's time for you to get that me time in. You can't be sitting in the same spot, in the same area for too long. You're going to start to trip out. So I get or I understand how it feels to not always think highly of yourself. To always feel like you're not beautiful, especially in these times and eras. On Instagram, when there's just nothing but freaking fake boobs, BBLs, fake bodies. Like every time you, I get on Instagram, it's an Instagram model, and they all look the same. So it can be very hard to still love yourself and think highly of yourself after seeing so much plastic and artificial stuff. But thankfully, God keeps me grounded, and I'm not weak-minded because in the midst of all that. Instagram models, baddies, and all that. I still think I'm beautiful. I still think highly of myself. I know I'm her, and it just makes me feel a hundred times better knowing I can probably pull the same guys or men as them in my natural state. And I just thank the most high every day for keeping me in a position to where I don't feel like I have to go and alter my appearance or my, you know, body to get the attention of a man and if i gotta do all that i don't need your attention i'm getting the wrong attention because if you can't mess with me in my natural state 
and how God made me, then you don't need to be messing with me. And I have damn sure don't need to be messing with you. And if, as a woman, if you are going to alter your body or your looks or whatever, do it for you. Don't do it for no man. Don't do it for no appearance. Don't do it for no type of audience. Do it for yourself. Always do stuff for yourself because people, men, they're going to always do stuff for them. Always put their stuff first for them. Not you, not nobody else. If you're going to do something for you, mama, do it for yourself. Speak on this topic because... I was wonderful, but side chicks. Now, I'm not judging nobody that's a side chick or that's willing to be a side chick. Cause like I said, I was in that position before and I'm about to tell y'all how. M most women feel like, most women know they're a side chick, but don't really acknowledge the fact that they're a side chick because in their mind, they're not thinking, oh, I'm a side chick. I'm getting what I want. I'm just out this nigga. I'm talking to him when I want to. He do whatever for me. And I ain't got no feelings for him. I ain't got no strings attached. So basically, I'm just messing with a man with a girlfriend. I don't really consider myself a side chick. And that's how I was thinking when I was messing with this dude that had a girlfriend. This was back in like 2017. And I had just stopped talking to this guy that I like really, really, really wanted to spend the rest of my life with. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we didn't last, it didn't work, so whatever. It was on Snapchat, he found me on Snapchat. I can't even tell you how he found me, just know he found me. And we started talking, and at first, I was in my head, I was like, I'm about to be on my single, you know, pimp type shit. I'm gonna talk to a flea of niggas, get what I want out of them, let them do whatever for me, but not be with them because I don't got time to get my heart broken again. And this dude, I'm not gonna say his name. And at first it was harmless, I didn't really think nothing of it. Wasn't trying to make nothing of it. Because like I said, I was on my pimp daddy shit. And we started, you know, conversing on Snapchat. The shit became to a point as like we became, we started becoming really, really good friends or whatever like that. Like as the weeks and the months passes, we, we, we opening up to each other. We talking about, you know, personal, emotional life shit, shit that happened to him, stuff that happened to me. And we became like real, real close. So one day, I'm on Instagram scrolling and his girlfriend found my Instagram, mind you, didn't know he was in a relationship, had me thinking he was single. And you know how girls are, when they would a dude and they find out he messing with somebody else, they go be nosy, see how the girl look, to see if, if you know, if she's shitting on them, or if they got one up on them, da, da, da. So she found my Instagram, made herself known. I wasn't really worried, never was worried because like I said, I don't want your man, I just want what he could do for me. Boom, didn't send it to me. Then like, so I ignored it. Cause like I said, y'all, I didn't want to be with him. Wasn't looking for a relationship. So I was ignoring all that extra things. I'm like, well, you're not my man anyway. So I don't have to deal with come with you. Wrong. Talking months later down the line, basically forming a friendship. At this point, I know he got a girlfriend. Don't care cause I don't want to be with him. I just like what you could do for me. The girlfriend decides to tell me something. The girlfriend decides to say something on Twitter or like a sub tweet or a shady post. And you know me, you ain't about to talk crazy to me. You ain't about to shame me and think I'm going to be quiet. This when I was back young and I used to just like drama. Like, and we back and forth that a lot on Twitter. And she talking about how I'm a side chick, how he be bird feeding me this, that, and the third. Whole time, mama, your man really love me, which ain't nothing to brag on because it's embarrassing to be in love with somebody that's in love with somebody else. But that's what it was at the time. So we get we back and forth fussing, throwing shots on Twitter. I hit her with the screenshots of our messages telling him he love me, I love him, this, that, and the third. Then I guess that must have made her feel some type of way. That must have made her feel stupid. She's like, Cause you could have him. I don't want him. Da -da -da -da. And yeah, whole time me and her was going through having our little dispute over him. He wasn't the only dude I was talking to. So I was like, damn, that's kind of a headache. I don't want to mess, keep messing with dudes that got girlfriends because I don't got time to keep fighting nobody over a nigga I really don't even want to be with all like that. So, like I said, most women are side chicks or settle for being side chicks because they could get whatever they want out of a nigga without actually having to be attached to that nigga. Especially when they start to fall in love with you and not really love their girlfriend no more. So it's like, all right, damn, now I'm a you to a nigga that really, really love me and I don't even love you all like that. It just be a lot going on. But nowadays I feel like some women really like that side chick stuff because it's a lot of rappers, athletes, you know, big public figures who 
are are getting put out that they are cheaters and they have side chicks. You know, women are still messing with them, I guess, because their status, their money, whatever, whatever. But I feel like at the end of the day, being a side chick, it's not cute and you come in second. You're coming second to who a man really wants. But then again, I can't really say that because men could be in a relationship with somebody they really want and really want you too. And the side women, they brag about it, which is not cute at all. A side chick, that's just somebody you could call on when you're in a, in a time of need. Leave it like that. Don't get on social media saying, oh, because I can have her man whenever I want. He did this to me. He did that to me because you're not doing nothing but making yourself look stupid. Not only are you a side chick, he never, he didn't even leave his girlfriend for you. Not going to leave his girlfriend for you. Not going to leave his wife for you. Nobody. You just there. But when him and his girlfriend get into a little tussle or whatever like that. And some women be knowing they men got side chicks and will not leave because they don't want to give the other woman the chance to say, oh, I stole your nigga. I took your nigga. And let's get this clear, girls, ladies. A man can never, ever be taken away from you. If you dealing with a man and a woman comes along and get his attention and he stop messing with you for her, that's because that's what he wants. That's what he, what he wants. So I'm tired of y'all saying how women be messing with y'all boyfriends when y'all boyfriends be messing with us. They be the ones insinuating shit. They be the ones instigating and starting shit. They be the ones bringing homeworkers into y'all homes. And when a woman see a man don't respect their relationship, you really expect another woman to respect your shit too? No, that's why y'all gotta stop fighting these women, get mad at these women, get mad at your nigga. Get mad at your man. Your man stepping out on you, baby. I feel like being a side chick, overall, if being a side chick works for y'all, kudos to you. Kudos to you. But I feel like at some point in time or some area in time or in your life, you got to want more than want to just be a side chick. Then they just got some women who ain't even built like that, who, who built for a tuck. Oh, you got an old lady? I ain't even about to deal with you because I don't even want that type of drama in my life. And slowly but surely, after that situation, I became into that type of woman. I'm not messing with no man and got a situation already because I'm, it's like trying to talk to them and do stuff with them. It's like pulling teeth. And it's like all these men in the world and I'm settling for somebody that's already taken? Nah, baby. I ain't going that wrong. All some women know is side chicks because they grown ones with side chicks, they mamas with side chicks, so they don't feel like they're worthy of that girlfriend or that wife or that fiance title. So they settle for being, you know, something to do when there's nothing to do. And I just feel like, again, women that do stuff like that, they don't really love their stuff like that. Because a real woman, if a real woman loves herself, she ain't about to make herself available to be second in not even just a man's life, nobody life, periods, okay? So like I said, side chick or being a side chick is not that all. It's cracked up to be. That shit is dangerous. Women like to kill, shoot, run people over over their men, especially their cheater ass men. Men don't even be good men. They be cheaters. Bring you through hell. And they really like to get violent over their men. So if you're going to be a side chick to somebody or you're going to tell yourself, oh, I'm going to mess with him, knowing he got a situation, come on. Uh, knowing he got a situation going on, please know what you're doing. Uh, please don't be messing with him long enough to the point where you catch feelings. Because catching feelings for somebody you knew wasn't going to leave their girlfriend for you or you knew was in a situation already is dumb. Like, come on now. That's dumb. If you're going to catch feelings, you don't even need to be messing with him. If you're going to mess with a man with, some, with something going on already, baby, the first thing you need not to do is catch feelings. And if you catch feelings, cancel that shit. Delete it. Let it go. Because at that point, you catch feelings, it's going to get crazy. drama -ful. And leads to all type of violence and, and just stuff you don't want in your life. But I just want to thank y'all so, so, so much for taking the time out to watch my videos. The last girl talk I did went up in numbers. We had almost 400 views on YouTube. Yay! It may not be a big milestone to y'all, but it's so, 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 so important to me because I am a small YouTuber. I went from... 40 subscribers to about what almost 77 like that's a really big deal for me that just makes me think damn people are really taking the time out to watch my videos um i must be talking about stuff y'all can relate to specifically in the girl videos because that's the videos that get to do the most numbers so that's just gonna make me keep you know making more girl talk videos and keep putting that content out there because i see that's what y'all like the most 
but like comment and subscribe hit the bell on the side let you know every time i drop some new heat and i will be back again with more content i love y'all so much bye, -bye.